Welcome to Pocus Geek. My name is Jared Marks, and in this video, I'm going to review the earliest definitive signs of an intrauterine pregnancy and walk you through a case showing you the anatomy. The earliest definitive sign of an intrauterine pregnancy is a yolk sac within a gestational sac within the uterus. This typically allows you to rule out an ectopic pregnancy. However, heterotopic pregnancies do occur in about 1 in 3,000 patients that are not undergoing uh, fertilization treatments and so this is a safe way as long as they are not having that treatment occur but what we're going to look at is we're going to see the uterus right here and we can see the cervix down here and like this and up around like that and often if it's an anterior inverted uterus like this it will look like an upside down shaped pair so if you kind of look through here down towards that it looks like that upside down shaped pair now what I often like to do in order to find this, this bladder's decompressed or empty, but I'll look for the bladder first, place the probe right uh, superior to the, sup the pubic bone with the probe marker towards the head. You'll see the bladder right here. And then you can look for the, endo or the transvaginal stripe right here, or the vaginal stripe, and then angle your probe upwards and you'll start to see the uterus like this. I always like to start and find this first view right dead center in the uterus. Sometimes it will allow you, you'll have to rotate your probe a little bit to clockwise or counterclockwise to be able to see this well, but you want to get this first initial view. And then what you're going to do is fan over towards the patient's right in this long axis view, and then towards the left. This will allow you to define your anatomy, which will keep you from making mistakes and being able to uh, really interpret where that pregnancy is present if you see it. So what we're going to see here is that we go over and here on the right, I'm going to point this one out because it's a little more difficult to see, but right here we see a portion of the uterus and it comes down like this, gets a little hazy over in here, but that's our uterus. And when as we fan across, we'll see that uterus come more into view and even more so And we're back to midline. And this is part of our endometrial stripe. In the next view, we'll see this possible uh, pregnancy right here or gestational sac. Keep fanning towards the left and eventually that uterus is going to disappear. We do, however, get to this point and see a cystic structure, anechoic structure. Don't get distracted by this. If you found it once, you'll be able to find it again. Stay to your, your scanning sequence so that you know what the anatomy looks like and then you can look at the other pathologies present. So we again see the cystic structure. Then we're going to go to short access. And what we have is we have our uterus here, down like this, and a little bit of the cervix is coming in. Remember that was really anterior flexed, so we're seeing a little bit of that in kind of two portions. Again, here's that cystic structure. We're not going to focus on that. We're focused on the uterus, but we did find it once before. We'll find it again. So we start to fan through, we see that uterus. Here's our endometrial stripe, kind of like this, comes down right through there. And then once again, we see this possible pregnancy right there. And the we see in this next view, we see the continued fundus right here. We start to see the vagina come in right here. And in the next view, here we go, we'll see the vaginal stripe again. And here is our bladder that we saw originally in that initial view. Now remember, this bladder is empty. Typically in transabdominal scanning, you want a full bladder. It makes it easier to see. The problem with this and the difficulty is they show up to the emergency room um, or to your urgent care clinic or maybe your clinic, and we have them urinate to do a pregnancy test. And then the study we want to determine where that pregnancy is needs a full bladder. I often try without a full bladder and see what I can. In this case, we're seeing pretty decent images. We're going to then check out our right ad next after we're done evaluating or defining the uterus. And so what we have is uterus over here. And then this is the area I'm going to pay attention to. I'm going to look for any structured masses, uh, something that doesn't look right. And mostly this is just bowel gas right here with some dirty shadowing down through here. Same thing. Here's our uterus again. And we're just focusing over on this area. Just see a lot of bowel gas, not much there. Same thing here. Then we're going to swing over to the left, and what we do see on the left is we see this anechoic structure, a black structure. This could be the ovary. It could be a part of the pr a pregnancy. Who knows right now? We're going to try to see if we can evaluate that any better, um, and we'll see what that shows us here. So we see in this view, we see a little bit more of that structure, but unfortunately in the transabdominal mode with that decompressed bladder, this is about all we're able to see. So what, we, what do we know from the... Uh, transabdominal scan, what we know is that our uterus is normal in appearance, right like this, and we have this possible gestational sac right here. 
Now, if we zoom in on that, we do see that it looks like what's called a double decidual sign. We have a little bit of reaction here, and then we've got this structure in here. And it's a little more thicker walled than I've drawn it in there, but this is called a double decidual sign. And that's one of your first signs of pregnancy, but it's not a definitive sign. And you should remember this, that the definitive sign for an intrauterine pregnancy is a yolk sac within a gestational sac within the uterine fundus in the endometrial stripe. So let's go forward here. And what we're going to do, so what we interpret this one is likely IUP. However, we would want to go on to get a transvaginal ultrasound. And I would do a transvaginal ultrasound anytime you can't document a fetus with a heartbeat. Um, now you could have a fetus with fetal demise. That I wouldn't necessarily. But if I can't see a good clear uh, fetal heartbeat, say it's a small uh, fetus, I'm going to do a transvaginal make sure that I have a fetus with a heartbeat because that changes follow-up. So we're going to see here and we're going to do the same scanning sequence, uterus long axis, uh, short axis, right adnex, left adnex, and then whatever pathologies or pregnancy we see. And so what we see here, this is um, anterior and this is posterior because the probe marker goes in towards the ceiling. Um, and so remember she had an anterior flexed uterus. Well, what we see here is that because we put the uterus right up against the wall, this is our uterus here and it looks like it's laying on its side but it's actually standing up towards the anterior portion of the patient compared to the posterior. And then we also see an endometrial stripe right through here. And this is our possible gestational sac right here. So let's see uh, what our next image is. And so we're gonna follow the same sequence. I like to fan through the uterus again. I fan through typically once and then come back and save images. I like to, um, when I save my images, I like to do stills because it makes me focus on what I need to do and focus to get that good image and really appreciate the anatomy. I think it causes people to miss less compared to doing a quick sweep through with a video and then moving on. And so what we're gonna see here is that we have our uterus come in and we're over towards the patient's right, we're fanning left. We see that endometrial stripe right here, nice and, nice and uh, thick there, nice and appropriate for this stage of pregnancy. And then we see in this next view, our gesta likely gestational sac right here. And we'll have to define that a little bit better and there's our endometrial stripe. And we're gonna to fan to the left till the uterus disappears. Now, because we couldn't see the entire uterus, we're gonna angle down or angle posterior to look at the cervix. And right here we see our endometrial stripe, but here is our cervix right like this. And we wanna be thorough, so we're gonna fan through this. We're gonna see this area just like that. And then we're gonna, after we've done that, we're gonna move on to a short axis. And so when we move on to obtaining a short axis, we're going to rotate the probe marker towards the patient's right. So with the transvaginal probe, the probe marker was towards the top, typically your thumb rests near that. Then you're gonna rotate your thumb back so it's almost pointing, so it's pointing towards you. The probe marker is at nine o'clock. So what we see now is we again see bladder. It's a little fuller than it was originally. So this is our bladder full of uh, fluid. And then we see our uterus right here. And so this is what we're gonna pay attention to as we fan through it. Now remember, we are right up against it, so we're gonna get a little bit better view this time. And we're gonna fan through here. We see this possible gestational sac. And then we keep going, uterus there. Endometrium's right in there, right here. And we once again see the black structure. I'm gonna do it in white over here. That's our cystic structure we saw before, but we'll evaluate that more. Here is our endometrium. Here's our uterus as we get towards the cervix. Now, once we found the cervix or got down to that, we are going to then look over at our right adnexus. So here's our uterus like that. And we're gonna focus on all this area. And what we see is that right here is an ovary. Now this is a little bit hazy because there's some um, near bowel gas around it. A lot of people describe the ovary as looking like a chocolate chip cookie uh, in that it has follicular uh, cysts and that um, they will appear anechoic. This one we don't see that well, but this is a typical appearance of an ovary, ovary that you'll see also. And that's a normal appearing one, whether you see those follicular cysts or not. Now we're gonna fan through the area, we just see more bowel gas. We're gonna make sure there's no adnexal masses. And what I like to do is really focus on this area here. That's where your tubal rings will uh, present. 
Now you can have an ectopic on the ovary or out in this area, but that's really unlikely. That happens in less than 1% of all ectopic pregnancies. So again, no adnexal masses. We're gonna swing over to the left. So here's our uterus. Um, and we're gonna focus out in this area. And what we see is we see this big black anechoic thing again. So right here and right through there. The things we're gonna pay attention to is there's no septae in it. Um, there's no echoes in it. Now this up here is artifact because the gain's a little high. So ignore that. But we're gonna try to determine is that part of the ovary and what we see. So we're gonna come back here. We see that cystic structure. We come here and we start to see this out here. And that is part of the ovary. So this is a simple cyst on the ovary. This is not the corpus luteal cyst, just a simple cyst that's occurring up on this ovary. And so we can see that defined well. We can see the parenchyma of the ovary down through here. And then our cystic structure being right there. Uh, if you feel so inclined, if you're worried about ovarian torsion, you can throw a color flow on it. Typically, this scale that you have over here, you're going to want to get down around four to three, three to four centimeters, maybe even lower at times. But remember that uh, ovarian torsion is not a sonographic diagnosis. It's a, it is a clinical diagnosis. They can still have um, color flow or blood flow to that ovary because they have two arterial sources, the ovarian artery and the uterine artery. And so this doesn't really mean a lot to us <clears throat> within point of care ultrasound. We already evaluated the ovary or the cyst on the ovary, which looked fine. So we're going to come back to this structure that we thought uh, or that we saw within the uterus. And what we're going to see here is that we can zoom in on it. And what we have is this gestational sac right here. Remember that part of the double decidual sign we saw before. We don't see that as well here as we did in transabdominal. But then right here we have a little circle. That is the yolk sac within the gestational sac. So this is definitive of, of an IUP. And this is just fanning through that. We do see a little bit more of that double decidual reaction out through here. And then here's our second decidua. And then we don't see the yolk sac quite as well, so we can keep fanning. And then we see that yolk sac right there. And once again, we can see it right there. Here is our endometrium. Here's our gestational sac lining. So our interpretation is an intrauterine pregnancy with a definitive uh, yolk sac. There is no visible fetus in this case, but we do know that this is a definitive IUP because of that yolk sac being present within the gestational sac. This um, would most likely rule out an ectopic pregnancy being present in your patient if they're having pain. If they're having significant pain, you need to consider something else as being their diagnosis. This is still a threatened miscarriage. And in this case, um, what I would do is I would recommend that they follow up in a week for repeat ultrasound to see if there's appropriate progression of the pregnancy, which would mean that there is development of a fetus, uh, fetus in a heart rate. If not, then this could be a early missed abortion. I hope you found this video helpful in helping you define an early intrauterine pregnancy. Remember that you have to have a yolk sac within a gestational sac to do that. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions at pocusgeek at gmail.com or a reply in the comments below. Have a great day.